Damn, we starting already? Yeah, you already. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Rash Talk Radio, coming at you live on MP3 from high on a hill above beautiful Lake Washington. My name is Les Pro, and with me as always is the Guru. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. And you know how this goes, we're here to talk a little trash on the week's worth of sports. I don't know anybody except the Guru, and the Guru knows all. Man, I know just a little something, something, man. Just a little something, man. Guru, it is episode number 78, and the Warriors are back in the finals for the fifth straight year. And they did it entirely without the best player in the league. How do they look better without Kevin Durant? And can they win it all without him? Then, in the East, Toronto has rallied back at home to even the series at two each. How concerned should the Bucks be? Can Giannis bounce back? And how concerned should Toronto fans be about Kawhi's limp? Plus, you know we got a two-minute drill. And Guru, I've even got a game time for you this week. Episode number 78. Let's roll. Guru, my man, how are you doing? Man, I'm living the dream. Don't you pinch me, man. Don't you pinch me. Did you have a good weekend? Oh, absolutely, man. I actually had a great weekend, man. My brother came out here um, for a week for a little vacation from college. He's a college student. You know those days in college. Oh, uh, God, I miss them. Yeah, right. So we, you know, big brother, middle brother, youngest brother. So all the seats, his boys go. So you know what else you're going to do when you have three brothers? Go do something competitive. So we went to the to the fun land, played some putt-putt. You know, big brother got to kick some ass in a little Tiger Woods, Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. Do you, uh, do you assert your big brother dominance? Of course. Of you know. course. You of know, course. Hey, 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 Steph Curry ain't the only damn big brother who's going to dominate the little brother, man. I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because I'm going to ask you about this uh, a little bit later on the show when we get to uh, when we get to Steph Curry. You know, I had a pretty good weekend too. I got to share this with you. I, uh, we, uh, the, uh, the, the wife and I and the, and and the little Lestro were out this weekend, and we almost uh, adopted a, a pair of cats. We almost, uh, we almost adopted a pair of two absolutely gorgeous black cats that were a bonded pair that we found. And uh, found, okay. No, no, so we didn't find them. They were at a store. They were at a, it was at a, at a, an adoption event oh, okay. uh, near the house. And uh, so we went. Uh, we, we were taking the, the kid up to see the, the cats. He loves them. Uh, so we, uh, we almost adopted these two cats. And they were these two uh, uh, beautiful cats that were, uh, they told us that they were strays that they had uh, gotten off the streets of Africa and, uh, and were bringing uh, here to look for an adopted home. And I was like, oh my God, we have to get these two cats. I'm going to name them Fufu and Jalof. Oh my gosh, that would have freaking be awesome, right? dude. Uh, turned out they uh, they weren't actually they were Middle Eastern cats and not uh, not African cats anyway and we couldn't we couldn't get them at the house there was no way uh, the the we the, the wife and I talked about it we we're like we don't we can't do two cats right now there's just oh, no way with two cats God. and, 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 a baby. and uh, yeah an 18 month old running around we can't we can't house break two cats and an 18 month old you know this is not not gonna be a thing but I as soon as I thought of the names I was immediately bonded to these cats Fufu and Jalof I was like they gotta be that's that's what it's gotta oh be oh my gosh that would have been awesome man that would have been awesome so now what, what is he gonna name the cat kebab yeah probably you know uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know hamburger you know, we'll see uh, the, the, the kid will name him and it'll be whatever he wants to uh, to call it a truck uh, you know that'll be the well, a cat named truck uh, so <laughs> So, Guru, let's uh, let's talk a little sports here, man. Because the uh, the NBA, the 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 third season of the NBA here, the uh, the playoffs are uh, are in full swing right now, uh, and uh, we know that the Warriors are headed back to the NBA Finals for the fifth straight year after sweeping the uh, the Trailblazers uh, in the Western Conference uh, Finals, and they did it entirely without the best player in the league. Guru, what is going on? How, is this team? How are they this unstoppable? Dude, I, it just it just hit me in the head. I just got boom. I saw you just that. You said you said fifth straight year. Fifth straight year in the finals. Dude, that's amazing. That's crazy, right? Oh my gosh! And it's like, you no, know, the really thing is, LeBron did it for eight straight, dude. Ah, this is, I had this in the drill. I got oh a new question. Oh my yeah. goodness! Wow. Anyways, more impressive. Uh, LeBron's eight. 
Oh, uh, LeBron, hey, man. Hey, I, I agree. This was it was on, one man. of the topics. I agree. <laughs> All right. All right. That, uh, that, is, uh, that is correct. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Already got to, I'm already get ahead right? of the game. That's right. But You're... is this a warrior sweep? Is this expected? Um, yeah. What are the Blazers? The Blazers are they're a good team. They're not a threat. Like, is anyone really? Did let's just forget all that Charles Barkley or getting some ratings and getting all that oh, that bombastic star talks. No, I'm not worrying about that. Did anyone really, realistically think? Portland Trailblazers. Who in the when they started this, this NBA season? Who started said Portland Trailblazers is going to the champion? No, no one said no that, one. dude. We've been saying the same thing for three years. There is no surprise. I'm not shocked. This, this is shock me, dude. I'm not shocked, dude. Are you are you surprised that? Or are you shocked at all that they swept them without Durant? You know, if Durant's in there, you know, of course it's not a shock, but. But he's he's the best player. No, no, I'm not sure because this is what people got to realize, um, Lestro. All right, the reason why they, you got to go by why did they get KD? Why was KD needed for for, um, for Golden State? Well, he wasn't. They won a they won a record number of no, games. No, they he lost was, the no, no, he was needed because there was one guy in the league that just took their heart. It was basically not really, it was when they pair of Kyrie and LeBron because Golden State knew. Kyrie and LeBron, when they won that championship, when they came back from 3-1, they couldn't stop LeBron. Even in the, the series before that, LeBron, people arguably would have said he would have been the first losing uh, um, player to get an MVP. To get the MVP, yes. yeah. So he was so dominant. And then the second go round, when LeBron figured him out, he won that game, of course, with Kyrie. So you know what Golden State did? They won. What I always tell you, they got the biggest insurance policy needed in sports. They got this guy for LeBron and Kyrie tandem. That is the reason why they got uh, uh, um, um, KD. They didn't get KD to beat uh, um, anybody else in the league. They already showed up by winning 72 freaking games. Right. This was all they just beat like, everybody yes, in the league. This was to go against LeBron and Kyrie. And you know what happened? This year, is there LeBron and Kyrie in the playoff? No. They're, exactly. They're, so do they need, not anymore. Do they need KD? Apparently not. Exactly. Because the only reason they got him was to defeat LeBron and Kyrie Tandem. And there is no Kyrie and there is no LeBron Tandem. And Golden State won the championship without... They could beat any other team without Kyrie and LeBron on the same team without KD. Well, this team, uh, this was actually done in an impressive fashion, too. Uh, 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 Seth, uh, Steph Curry... Not Seth. Uh, mm. Steph Curry uh, stepped up in this one uh, in a way that of the Steph Curry of old, hitting like 30 plus points in, in every game, uh, really just just carried this this team uh, uh, and 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 on comebacks and Draymond as well uh, steps up. This team uh, comebacks three 17 point uh, and and bigger comebacks. The 17 pointer in the in the final game, uh, three games in a row they come back from at least 17 points on the Trailblazers uh, to to. to just run them over on the way through this series. Now, it's important. I agree. I think we have to note that the Trailblazers. You said no one expected them. They were pretty good. Uh, they're also missing their third guy with uh, with Nurkic uh, on the injury. The fact that they got this far in the first place is is a testament to how good that team actually is. And and they're kind of like a like a lesser version of the Warriors with that with the with with CJ and Dame and and Nurkic in the in the the Warriors big three roles but just not as good. Uh, you know, I'd like to see this with Nurkic. It's a different game, but, but I still think they, they lose. No, they're just cute. It's all right. They they're never going to be a threat. You just Dame is not that guy. He's yeah, just cute. not that guy. They're never going to be they're like in football, what like the Lions or what they say, the Chargers. They're just certain the teams. Chargers. They yeah, also has the Chargers, the Chiefs. Yeah, they're never just, gonna get it's it. It's just certain teams. Yes, yeah, like, yeah, that's cute. <laughs> they're just there. They're gonna win some games. They, they're gonna bring some fans because they, they're gonna work hard. They're gonna play hard. You know, they're gonna play for the city and they you know represent. You know, they have integrity because those are the people that drafted in those organizations. So they have character guys. But as far as what you need, championship, nah, they don't have that pedigree. It won't happen. Dame and CJ, that core can't beat what's happening right now. It was just luck of the draw. They played go uh, um, Denver. Houston could have easily been their second round instead of uh, they could have Houston could have smoked them out of the, out of the playoffs. So it was just luck of the draw. They played a young, inexperienced team, the youngest team in the playoff in basketball, which was the Denver Nuggets. Now I want to talk about the, the Warriors here because how does 
uh, how do they look better? They, they're this is a more fun team to watch without Durant. It just they, they seem uh, they seem to move the ball more. It's just it's it's a more fun team to watch without Durant. Do you think this hurts Durant at all uh, uh, going Absolute, forward? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What about, all right, not going. But what about his legacy? Do you think it hurts the Durant legacy uh, in the in the long like, run? I be mean, honest. Obviously, he's getting paid wherever he goes. I, I because I think is the is the vantage point. You know, I, I I just see the vantage point a little bit different. KD did exactly just what an intelligent person do. Okay, uh, uh, this is the steps of being successful and stopping the noise. All right, I need to win championships. You know, LeBron did this. You know, when he went, with, uh, he got to learn how to win a championship. Boom, he went to a team that he knows. Okay, I could help him win a championship because I am the LeBron def- um, beater. Boom, came there, won a couple of championships, showed my MVP cal- um, t- um, caliber. Uh, he did exactly what he won. Now it's not about oh, uh, he never won a championship. Now it's oh, he won a championship with the with, with the, those other teams. I don't. It's still a championship, bro. At the end of the day, you can say that championship, uh, that, that doll is crumpy and ugly, and your dollar is crisp and clean. Uh, and when we go to the bank, it's still a damn dollar, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 damn dollar lost in this one. You man. know, nah, man. I told you that he's not damn dollar, man. He, nah, hell no, nah, he's fifty cent, man. Dame's twenty five cent. So, uh, so this one uh, rolls on uh, to the to the playoffs. They're going to take on either the Bucks or the Raptors. A series we're going to get to in a minute. Do you think they need KD to beat either of these two teams, or can Is they just there, can hey, they just shell do them? Those two teams. Kevin those, Durant, thanks for your time. Uh, it's been it's been great. Do those Heal two teams have Kyrie and LeBron on their squad? Oh yeah, they've got the because uh, Giannis and uh, and Kyrie. Do they? Uh, no, uh, Kawhi. They, I'm sorry. They don't have none of those teams have LeBron or Kyrie on that team. So no, they don't need KD. But having KD means it could be a good, it's gonna be a sweep. You know, that's a, it's just how bad you want to dominate. It's just that's that's the beauty about it. It's like, I know they're not better without KD. No, they might play a different style. But at the end of the day, you can't. It don't make no sense. The Bulls still went to the playoff when Jordan retired. You know, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Knicks. I Pippen, saw that. Pippen almost took yeah, them all the way. Yeah, exactly. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? When Jordan came back, they were better. They were just better. It's just different. All right? It's just a different style. It's just a different way. And KD is the biggest insurance policy in sports. Well, I love uh, I love watching this team without Kevin Durant. I love when Draymond steps up. And for me, he's the difference maker here. Obviously, Clay is... is ha- a lot happier being second banana than third banana. He's he's Scotty Pippen. He's not further down the chain. You know what I mean? And when when Durant's there, it pushes Clay down. But all season long, it seemed like the the biggest beef, if there was any, the sort of friction, if there was any friction on the team, it seemed to be between uh, Draymond and Durant. And with Durant not there, it seems like Draymond is is more it's unleashed. Bigger. It's like you think about this. Okay, what makes KD so good is because he's efficient, right? It's like, what's Draymond do? He get the, the scrappy plays, right? The yeah. dirty plays. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, so if my guy's getting the buckets, you know, if he get touches and he's efficiently getting buckets, oh shit. I'm not, what am I great at? Like, that, what am I, what's my use? Defense. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's it. It's like now you're becoming a defender. And you, at the end of the day, you put this guy put up all those points. You're up by so many points. Even your defense only. All right, so let's uh, let's turn our attention to the other side and talk about the other series, which is a lot more exciting than it was last time we talked, Guru. As the uh, as the Toronto Raptors have come all the way back to tie this series uh, two games apiece with that uh, thrilling overtime victory uh, on uh, in Game Three, and then uh, and then just blowing them out on uh, at at home there in Toronto in Game Four. Uh, so, so Guru, I, I got to ask you about this one a little bit here. Uh, do you think this is going to reignite the uh, the fires for the, for the Bucks? Should they be concerned here? No, they shouldn't be concerned. Because you're a you've been on the Bucks uh, yeah. all season. You're the, the freak is barreling through. He's he's eating the uh, he's eating with his they, hands. They I think I think is what it was. <laughs> and uh, and is, uh, is is taking his uh, so, team all yeah, the way he through. Don't, he don't got that, that that bird flu. You know what I'm saying? Right. He don't, he don't got that, that virus in the morning. But anyhow, uh, this is a very challenging as always. A very competitive game. Very competitive series between two high level teams, two high level opponents. 
that are other than obviously Kawhi and Gasol, they got a couple of experienced guys in Toronto, but realistically as a core, this team, they're pretty new as far as being in this type of situation, being this close uh, as far as achieving, just the core. Yes, there are some uh, organizations that achieve that, but like I said, this is Kawhi's first year in Toronto, so there's a different whole dynamic. Could be his last year in Toronto, too. I'm, oh, yeah, in and out. OG Classic, Kawhi, in and out. OG Classic. <laughs> right? Getting <laughs> one and done. But this is one of those situations, I think, um, <laughs> Bucks have been a good situation because they don't have to win a game in Toronto. Like, that's what we got to realize. They could win the series without having to win a game in Toronto. So, and another factor, obviously, the, the injury. It's nice to get that one seed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you got that injury situation um, going on. And as the series go deeper and deeper, which I, I do overall, essentially, I think it's going to go deep, you know, six or seven games. That is going to take its toll. And just the depth, the depth of Milwaukee is going to kick in. And the, those shots going to make, they're going to go in in the second half. So, I, I mean, at home. So, I definitely, definitely see Milwaukee taking the game five and just taking a strong goal of the series. You think it goes six or you think it goes seven? Um, you think Toronto gets that game back in Toronto? I want it to go six because then I want to see Milwaukee, if they could take that step, because then I really show me if at least minimal wise they can make a gentleman sweep if KD comes back for that series you know without KD I think Milwaukee win it but with KD it's a gentleman sweep mm -hmm. you think Milwaukee beats the Warriors without KD without KD yeah. see we were saying before that's what I was asking you about before and you were saying no they, they beat this team uh, of both know. ways I, I think that's actually an issue too I think that uh, I think that they need KD uh, to I don't know if they need him to beat Milwaukee, but they certainly need him to beat them quick. Yeah, if they're going to beat exactly. them, if they're going to beat them in less than seven games, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to need to. Uh, they're going to need KD out mm -hmm. there for Milwaukee. For Toronto, I think that they. Uh, I think they blow past Toronto because mm -hmm. I think Toronto is built like the same way. They're, they're just not as good as the Warriors. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a similar style. That's like not Portland as good. is just going to be done. Yeah, it's, it's baby Warriors that can't keep up. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the. Ter uh, the the box are built different because they're built around around Giannis. So that's that's a different game, and uh, I, that's I look forward to seeing the those two teams play because I don't think I don't think that uh, that Toronto. I think Kawhi's injury uh, it looks like he's been pulling on that that left hammy mm -hmm. or that left quad again rather, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which has kept him out for like four years now. Uh, it looks like he's been pulling on that and limping around on that. Uh, not. Something I would be concerned about if I were a Toronto yeah, fan. Yeah, absolutely, man. The Bucks are going to blitz him. They're going to blitz him at home, man. They're going to really test that that injury. So, I, I, like I said, I think the Bucks are going to get a... Uh, it's, it's a do or die. This is gonna really going to test the heart of Giannis. And I think he's built... He's built for this type of stage. He's built for this type of situation. He's being prepped for this. You know what they say when opportunity meets preparation. You know, that's when, you, when, when the luck situation happens and being at home. So I definitely, definitely see Milwaukee. I, I, I see a double-digit victory. Uh, I see, and uh, I think the the issue in this was that the, uh, you know, you talk about depth. Toronto's been the deepest team uh, all year. They're uh, their regular season depth, if you will, as opposed to their playoff depth, because they're they're a little bit different, uh, has been uh, was w the best in the league, and their bench has just been nowhere to be seen. And what started to happen is it seems like their bench is waking up a little. Now you were saying we were talking about this during the Sixers series, uh, benches for uh, the home home games. You know what I mean? They're, mm -hmm. That's they they really come together at the home mm -hmm. games. The bench bench doesn't work on the road mm -hmm. as, as well. So that might be where it is. But the guy, I was telling you this before uh, before we went on air earlier this week, where the hell's Fred Van, v Van Vliet been <laughs> for this team? You know, we hear his name last year in the playoffs. He scored 11 points a game during the season. Disappears in this series. He was there in game four when, uh, when they ran it out. Uh, you know, uh, you hear missing shots is what you hear because he was uh, like... Uh, atrocious on his three-pointer uh, attempts, uh, I think, uh, in, in Game Three. But uh, Game Four, 13 points, scores, uh, scores for him, and gets back into this game. If if Toronto can keep their bench engaged, it could go seven. Is is what I'll say. It could go seven. And if it goes seven, if we, they can, if they can, and I think there's going to be even more pressure with the quad situation and his injury situation. That's going to put super, super pressure on the bench guys, and I think that could force a couple of uh, on, uh, things that they could put them in a situation where they not normally are, and then they might not be comfortable in those type of situations, which is which will cause, when well, you know, comfortable in situation and cause irrational 
decision making and which could you know could in, in, in a large sense hurt Toronto yeah I gotta tell you though part of me really wants to see uh, Kawhi Leonard and KD uh, go at it as, as well because they both both of them are limping too right yeah but now the problem is that they're both they're both limping I actually think that the limp uh, mentioning that, I think this helps Toronto's case for uh, keeping for keeping Kawhi because if you know he's he's not a he, he, Kawhi's a smart man and he knows that Toronto's going to back up a dump truck full of money if he wants to stay there and if he's thinking shit, I tweak this thing every year, take the money, stay in Toronto, uh, be a hero. Dude, you and, think Kawhi's worried about the money, dog? No, it's that uh, if if he's got an injury, if he's got a nagging thought, Dude. then it becomes different because no, Toronto can challenge with him up there Kawhi, Kawhi. anybody can challenge if you got Kawhi Leonard let them enjoy these next two games of Kawhi Leonard it's been a great memory of Kawhi he's in and out OG classic he'll be one of them folk tales for for the water boy for Luca and them boys when they tell the kids you know 20 years ago we used to have this guy you know big strong guy man <laughs> make game winning shot for us man but One he time came, from he the played, South. He played a total probably of 70, 80 games, total including the players combined. Something around that nature. Yeah, I don't but even know if it was that. The load management had him like 51 this know, season or something. He was still a legend. He's going to be a legend of <laughs> Toronto. Man, it's all right, baby Raptors, man. You guys will get someone, man. It's One right. shot. <laughs> Is there anything? And I, you know, I talked about this. I, I want to... I hate the name of the Raptors. I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta get this out. I said it uh, during the, the Sixers series. There's nothing more embarrassing than losing to a team with a gimmick name. You gotta change something up there, Toronto. I, uh, I, I, we can't. I think your problem is not that you're Canadian. You've talked about the curse of Canada guru and uh, and, and getting the uh, you know a Canadian team in an American game. I think it's that fucking name. I think you named yourself after a movie. You named yourself after a gimmick. Uh, and it's it, it, the first twenty years of your existence, you wore purple and had a dinosaur dribbling a basketball. This is, it, come on. Uh, I think what Dude. they should do is I think they should keep that new logo with the ball, which is really cool. They can even keep the team name. Just change it to a bird. Just make it the Raptors, like the Falcons or the 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 Hawks and the the the, you know some some. Oh my God! You know what's so crazy about your your little rant today, May twenty second, nineteen ninety four. Though day on May twenty second, nineteen ninety four. That's when the Toronto Raptors unleashed their logo and their name. Uh, on the world. Unleashed it on the world. How many years? Uh, when? 1994? Yep. That is 25 years ago today. Yep. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Is that, even for the Happy 90s. Happy birthday to them, right? Even for the <laughs> 90s, that logo. That was the biggest. Look, the two biggest thing. In it, look, the crazy thing is, in the 90s, let me tell you, the two biggest thing that was happening, was, it was Jurassic Park and Barney. So you know what the, the Canadians did? They meshed both of them together, man. That's exactly what was going on in there. You knew that, man. I love you. And then, <laughs> and the smart ass Canadians, purple, they put it together, man. Wow, that's genius. Are you talking about, I hate all this gimmicky, gimmicky. I hate hey, it. Hey, I love least, all that maple over there, Canada. At least, at least the Mighty Ducks had the good sense to drop the Mighty and are just the Anaheim Ducks now, you know? I mean, come on. Uh, Raptors, you're embarrassing only yourselves at this point. Hey, did they ever have dinosaurs in Toronto? Probably, yeah, I'm sure. Why not? Yeah, dinosaurs in Toronto, man. Dinosaurs everywhere. Man, I can't have no damn dinosaurs in Toronto. It's too cold, man. Wasn't at one point. Shit. Every bling was nah, everywhere They, they else. got Willy Mammoth and shit. Damn, Toronto, what happened? Back in the days, you used to they have dinosaurs, babe. I certainly don't think they have raptors in a, a you know, like it wasn't, Dude. Toronto was not known. Hey. I want to see, man, Could somebody please go Google this, go find it. Did they ever find any raptor bones, any T-Rex bone in the province of anywhere in Canada, in the whole north, whatever you call it, the con what the hell is it, continental Canada? Nah, it's the a country. country. The whole country, the man. The whole country. There might as well be a continent as long as a damn continent, the man. Vast, the vast lands of Canada to yeah. the north, the great north. All right, now let me get out of this. Let's, uh, Guru, let's, uh, let's transition here uh, and, uh, and talk a little bit. Uh, we'll do the, uh, we'll do the two-minute drill, and then I got a game time for you. But, uh, but before we get into those, you got to, uh, you got to do the plugs. Plug, 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 plug time. 
Trash Talk Radio and TrashTalkRadio.com, brought to you by the World of Sports Network.com. World of Sports Network, connecting the world through the sports we love. Head on over to the YouTube page uh, and subscribe to it. Make sure you subscribe. Go to the YouTube, search for World of Sports Network, and click subscribe. Trash Talk Radio available, of course, everywhere you get your podcasts. We're on Apple, we're on uh, iTunes, we're on uh, Google, we're on Spotify. Uh, do us a favor, leave us a review. Subscribe and, uh, and leave us a review down there. Uh, tell us what you think, tell us how we're doing. And, uh, and, and make sure you check that out. If you're looking for me, uh, Lestro, you can find me every day on Twitter at more or Lestro, at more or Lestro. You can find the guru on Instagram at Guru's Film Room. It's just his thoughts. Just his thoughts. And for extended version of his thoughts, make sure you check on wozenshop.com. That's W O S N shop.com, where Guru every now and again uh, uh, lets one loose. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the deep thoughts uh, uh, over there on, on rosenchop.com. It's also your chance to get all kinds of great Trash Talk Radio and World Sports Network merchandise. One more time for the people in the cheap seats, trashtalkradio.com. And Guru, tell them that hashtag. That's 10K for T-T-R. Okay, Guru. So we're a uh, uh, quick show this week because we got the uh, we got just the, basically the NBA going on, but it doesn't mean that there wasn't other things going on in the world of sports. So are you ready here for a, a quick two-minute drill? Let's get it. So we play the two-minute drill here on Trash Talk Radio. Is uh, I put two minutes on the clock. It's our chance to talk about everything we didn't get to talk about on the show. Two minutes on the clock, and uh, and I start lobbing questions at the guru. Here we go. Guru, we're going to talk a little football for a second. Uh, Arizona quarterback Pat Peterson, uh, one of your favorites, was suspended for six games for PEDs. Uh, what does this do for him and uh, and uh, and? Just your thoughts on this, man. Absolutely nothing, man. I use PEDs. You use PEDs. We all use PEDs, man. He just got caught. That's all. You can see I, I am huge because of it. It is uh, my neck. No, I don't know, man. It's not those type of PEDs. It's different type of PEDs. There's the coffee PEDs. You know what I'm saying? There's the there's the alcohol. There's the take a shot PEDs. There's the Mary Jane PEDs. There's the PEDs to help you go through everything, man. Chris Rock says if there was a, if there was a pill that would make you better at your job, you'd make more money, you'd take it. Exactly. You just would. You wouldn't ask questions. Uh, more football, and Dominic and Sue headed to uh, Tampa Bay. What do you think of this? It's kind of ironic, right? In that same draft class, they let, uh, it was Sue that got picked up, and then it was Jordan McCoy right after that, and then Jerry McCoy just got released, and they just picked up in Dominic and Sue. Mm. Uh, another uh, football news, the uh, Edelman, uh, uh, Julian Edelman re-signing to stay with the New England uh, Patriots. Two years, $19 million, $12 million guaranteed. He's got three rings up there with him. Is he Tom Brady's Jerry Rice? Ooh, he does a good one. You like that? Ooh, yes, he is. Because some might say they might be grunk, but he's I think he's most his safety blanket, his best friend, his everything. I will say Julian Edelman is Tom Brady's best and favorite receiver. Yeah, there's always been a, it's been like cycling through receivers up there. Belichick, we were talking about this before. Belichick's just a, a, a cold and ruthless with his uh, with his uh, players, especially his receivers. Uh, Edelman seems to have, have found a way in though. Uh, all right, one more NFL question for you. Uh, the NFL is apparently outlawing the Oklahoma and Bull in the Ring drills. Guru, what are the Oklahoma and Bull in the oh, Ring drills? Oh, man, the Oklahoma and Bull in the Ring bull drills made a lot of NBA basketball <laughs> players you guys are watching right now. <laughs> made a lot of track athletes. Made a lot of Major League Baseball players. That drill made into you every, made a kid into a man. The only example I'm going to show you what that drill is. We all see National Geographic, right? You ever seen the Rams? You know what I'm saying? Like, on National Geographic, just coming straight at each other, just head, just pow. That is that drill. You're in a circle, two grown men or whatever kids, whomever, you just come. You, you said you, you, and you come straight like a ram, come at each other full speed. Whoever get knocked out, get knocked out, man. That's a ridiculous drill. Yeah, exactly. That's why a lot of people play basketball. I would a play lot basketball. Of, exactly. And because that's if, when you get caught, when you get your pads on, that first day, there's a lot of people I never see the next day after that, dog. There's a lot of people I never see, but they're shooting hoops, though. There's a lot of people that uh, that aren't shooting hoops that just don't remember the next day after it and just went on like, ah, it's fine. Everything's everything's fine. <laughs> All right, Guru. Uh, one more question for you. We talked about uh, we talked about Seth Curry and Steph Curry uh, uh, battling on this one. The brothers playing. Uh, you and your brothers are all uh, are all uh, uh, athletes at at least at the college level th- thus far. What's it like when you take on uh, a brother and brother uh, on something like that? When you guys are trained to do this, how serious do y'all get? Oh man, as the big brothers, is the is the challenging thing because you all got to school. You got to school. You got to win, right? You have to win. Like it's just. 
Then, you know, that's why Portland never had, you know, I did on, on, on my IG on Goose Film when I did a little take on it, as the, um, Steph had to win, and he had to win dominantly just to prove the fact that, hey, <laughs> this is what brother. I've been doing. Like, dude, I changed your diapers, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I did things to you that, you know, like, and now you think you finna do this to me. So just, it was a different type of situation. And I, I'm not the youngest, so I'm always the oldest. So I don't have the mind, the vantage point of being the youngest or the middle one. So it's always been me. I did it first. I taught you this. But also it's different. Because They're always coming for you. Yeah, but the happiest thing during the world for us is seeing them successful. You know, that's like the best thing, the happy, happy, happiest thing. Because we wish them well, you know. We wish them the best. But at the end of the day, we scouted them more than any coach any player, any GM, anyone in the history of the world, as Big Brother, we scouted everything because we know when the nose move, uh, we know what you're going to do. When you have just certain things, nuances that we know as Big Brother because we taught you, we taught you all that stuff. Well, then maybe uh, at some point, Seth Curry will get lucky, Steph will retire, and the Portland Trailblazers can get in there for a year or two uh, as well. All right, Guru, that is our time this week on Trash Talk Radio. Uh, uh, so, uh, you're looking at me funny. Game time? Oh, I, you're right. It's not actually our time. <laughs> you know what? It's time for game time. Here we go. Game time. Game time. Game on. Game on. Game time. Sounds like game time. We should do the three of us should play a game of stick ball. <laughs> Spent all this goddamn time writing this game. Completely Ooh, forgot about it. Because uh, we, uh, we haven't been doing this in a while. Game time. <laughs> That's how, lo how long it takes for us since we've been doing it. <laughs> game time on Trash Talk Radio. Uh, Ooh, Guru, I got a, got a good one for you this week, I think. Speaking of that Trailblazers loss, with them eliminated from the playoffs, their star player, Damian Lillard, can now focus on his other career. Rapping. Mm-hmm. Lillard is generally considered one of, if not the best, NBA players to ever rock a mic, though he's by no means the only baller to spit a few bars. So the game here, Guru, is how well do you know your NBA rappers? Oh, man. Huh? Oh, shit. All right, as always here on Game Time on Trash Talk Radio, right answers get us Marv. Yes! Wrong answers get us Rabel. It's no good! Here we go, question number one. Let's start with Dame Dalla himself, who has put out two albums to date, the letter O and confirmed. And he's put out some singles too. Which <laughs> which of the following sports theme titles is not the name of a Dame Dollar track? Which one is not a Dame Dollar track? Is it Bill Walton, Shot Clock, Shooter, or Pick and Roll? Bill Walton, Shot Clock, Shooter, or Pick and Roll? Which is not a Damian Lillard Dame Dollar track? Pick and Roll. Pick and Roll is correct. Yeah! Yeah, dog. Back I know my it. NBA rapper's son. Well, see, question number two. While Lillard might be the uh, the one of the best, one of his opponents this this postseason is considered to be among the worst rappers uh, ever. After he appeared in a video uh, spitting a verse about it, the cafeteria where he went to college, who actually rapped the lyric? "Quote: The outpost might be open later, but Allison not gonna flavor your taters." Was it Russell Westbrook? Steph Curry, Paul Millsap, or Sean Livingston? Who rapped about their uh, college cafeteria? Russell Westbrook, Steph Curry, Paul Millsap, or Sean Livingston? Jeez, I would say that sounds something kind of quirky and witty, so I'll say Steph Curry. That is correct. I know my... <laughs> Damn, my was, NBA rapper son. Steph Curry back in, uh, back in college at Davidson. It was a parody of an Arthur Ross track way back Man. in 2009 uh, called I Love Commons about the, uh, about the cafeteria there. All right, question number three. Back in 2012, which NBA superstar dropped the track uh, Worried About Tomorrow, which featured the following lyrics. Never worried, about, uh, never worried about another day. Never worried about what people think and never worried about others say selfishly I'm worried about me. Who dropped the line, selfishly, I'm worried about me? Was it KD, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, or Russell Westbrook? 2012, which NBA superstar in 2012 said, uh, never worried about another day, selfishly, I'm worried about me? Was it KD, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, or Russell Westbrook? 2012, I would say, that's the King James. It's no good! 
It was actually KD himself said that on the uh, the song "Worried About Tomorrow." Never worried about another day. Never worried about what people thinking and what uh, what they'll say. Selfishly, I'm worried about me. It's pre championships uh, back there. Should have okay. been a hint. Should have been a hint, Oklahoma. Okay. Okay. All right, question number four. Uh, back in the day, which NBA superstar's gangster rap album, Jewels, was shelved because NBA commissioner David Stern called it, quote, coarse, offensive, and antisocial, and uh, threatened to disqualify the player because of this album, so it never came out. Whose album, <laughs> Jewels, never came out? Was it Dennis Rodman, Ron Artest, Allen Iverson, or Rasheed Wallace? Oh, man, those are good ones, dog. Oh, my God. Dennis Rodman, Ron Artest, Allen Iverson, or Rasheed Wallace. Who all had an album called Jewels that never came out? Despicable. All of them were despicable. <laughs> all of them would do some despicable acts, man. I'm going to go with the most despicable of all despicable despicable That would be Dennis Rodman. <laughs> let me was, find it. Let me, let me guess. AI? It was actually Allen the Answer Iverson. <laughs> Uh, Alan the Anson Iverson had an album called Jewels, which never came out. It was a gangster rap record. Was, there was a couple was, songs what? came out. Uh, it was. Uh, he's since said he's embarrassed by it. That uh, he's glad it didn't come out because it's embarrassing. Hey, but speaking of Ron Artest, Metal World Peace has officially released two albums of his own. Uh, you know, on an uncaring world, 2006's My World and 2011 Ballin Mixtape. Which of these is not? A Ron Artest classic banger. Which of these is not a Ron Artest song? Game time, on that new shit, work in the pole, or malice. Which is not a Ron Artest song? Game time, uh, on that new shit, work in the pole, or malice. On that new shit. That is not right. Malice is the one that I made up there. That is a uh, man. That's a uh, man. Damn, dog. Right? Okay. Ron Artest getting you every I time. I know the new school NBA rappers, man. Good, because on to the younger kids. Uh, question number six. What younger NBA player has released singles about his brother, his father, a Dragon Ball Z character, and his Lonzo name? Ball. That is correct. I wasn't yeah. going to give you any clues on that one anyway. All right, Guru, one final question in our NBA rappers game, and uh, you get no hints on this one. Uh, this is one you should just know. Who is the only NBA player to ever get signed to a label deal, go platinum,